Hey guys, this is our final review, and now we're going to look at some rational expressions. Uh, we're going to have to do a lot of factoring here. Uh, the factoring is not going to be super complex. A lot of it's just going to be uh, an a equals 1 type factoring. Uh, so in this case, things that multiply negative 10 add up to 3. That's going to be n plus 5 and n minus 2. The bottom, things that multiply to 6 and add up to negative 5 n minus 3 and n minus 2. My n minus 2's cancel out, and that should reveal the answer very quickly for us. These are all identical. Uh, sometimes you're going to see things that are not necessary to factor or in pretty good shape for you, like number 93. Uh, I can cancel out the 3's before I begin. Uh, 2 over 4 reduces to 1 over 2, and v squared over v reduces to v on top. And v over 2 would be the final thing. Similarly, looking at 94, uh, I'm going to do some cross-canceling before I really begin this. The 4s cancel out. Uh, 5 over 3 doesn't have anything to cancel with. Um, I've already got my answer because that's the only one that has 5 over 3, but just kind of continuing. n squared times n squared is going to be n to the 4 on top. And I've got a over a. Those cancel out as well. So 5 over 3, n to the 4th, that definitely is d. Okay, we've got to identify the vertical, horizontal, asymptotes, domain and range for each of these. Um, I'd start with the asymptotes. Uh, on your uh, exam, domain and range might be listed first, but let's start with our asymptotes because those are easier to find. To find the VA, we're going to set the bottom equal to 0. So x plus 4 is equal to 0. That means that x equals negative 4 is my vertical asymptote. Uh, the vertical asymptote translates directly to the domain, and the domain is going to be all real numbers such that x does not equal negative 4. If you write this for the domain, you're totally fine. Uh, for the horizontal asymptote, we had a shortcut for this, which was to divide the two terms of highest degree and see what we get. Uh, there's a little bit more complicated reason why this works, but if I do x over x, I get 1 as my uh, horizontal asymptote. And just like for the vertical asymptote, uh, y cannot equal 1 in our function, uh, and that would be the range. The vertical asymptote will always tell you the domain, and the horizontal asymptote will always tell you the range. Looking at number 100, again, VA, x plus 3 equals 0. That means that x equals negative 3. The domain, x can't equal negative 3. For the horizontal asymptote, we're going to divide our two linear terms, and we get y equals negative 2. Uh, please make sure you give me the horizontal and vertical asymptotes as equations, uh, just so that I know that you know that these are lines. Uh, and then we've got a range of y cannot equal negative 2. For number 101, we're on to solving some uh, rational equations. Uh, these are ones that you will have one of. Uh, you got to do some factoring. You got to get some common denominators. And uh, these were not our favorite things that we did this year. For number one, we got 1 over n minus 5. I'm going to multiply by n plus 4 on the top and bottom because I'm missing that part of the denominator. I am not going to multiply the bottom out because I know I'm going to cancel my denominators out in a minute. Um, okay, that's going to be equal. On the other side, we've got n minus 3 over n plus 4. Uh, to this one, I'm going to multiply n minus 5. And again, I'm not going to multiply the bottom out because I know I'm going to cancel those denominators. I will multiply that top out, though, in the next step. And then I've got, uh, I don't know why I put an equals there, uh, minus a half. This doesn't have either denominator. 
So it needs both an n minus 5 and an n plus 4. And I've got to do that on the top and bottom. Okay. Uh, all my denominators can be canceled out at this point, except for that 2. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, to avoid fractions, I might multiply this thing by 2 on the top and the bottom. And then I don't have to deal with that. Okay, so putting everything together, we get 2 times n plus 4. And that's going to be 2n plus 8. Uh, we're going to get 2 times n minus 3. Why is that? Oh, because it's n minus 3 from there. Okay. Times n minus 5. I'm going to do this part first and then just multiply it by 2. That's an equals. So we get n squared minus. Or, wow, how did I get 2 squared? I'm doing great today. I'm going to plus 15 at the end. Uh, and then minus 3n minus 5n is 8n. And then over here, we've got minus 1. I'm going to put parentheses again. we got n squared minus 1n and minus 20. Okay. Um, let's do some like termy stuff. This is a super awesome problem. We get 2n plus 8. That's the hard part. Equals 2n squared minus 16n plus 8. 30 uh, minus 1n squared plus 1n plus 20. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm going to bring everything to one side while we're here. So I'm going to minus 2n and minus 8, minus 2n minus 8. So we get 0 equals because it looks like we're going to have to factor. Uh, 2n squared minus 1n squared is 1n squared. Then we're going to have minus 16n, that's minus 15n, and minus 17n. Then we're going to have plus 30, that's 50, and minus 8 is plus 42. Okay, uh, 42 is going to be 14 times 3 which thankfully the negatives add up to 17. So we get 0 equals n minus 3 and n minus 14. n equals 3, n equals 14. If I look at those two solutions, uh, neither of those causes an issue up here because not, neither of those would cause me to divide by 0. Uh, and that's it. Oof, that was a mess. Uh, maybe look at number 104. Uh, you do need to know how to do difference two squares factoring. Uh, that's going to be an important part for your final. Uh, so if we do 3 over, so we can be k minus 2, k plus 2. And here we've got k plus 1. That needs a k plus 2 because it only has a k minus 2 right now. Okay, I'm not going to multiply out the bottoms uh, because we're just going to get rid of those. But I know that I need a k minus 2, k plus 2 over k minus 2, k plus 2 to replace this one. Okay. Uh, so we get 3 is equal to, that's going to be k squared, plus 2k, plus 1k is 3k, and then plus 2. Then we've got, we already know what this is because that came from this, so k squared minus 4. Bring everything to one side, so I'm going to minus 3 to both sides. I kind of like that, adding that to the back of this when I subtract that. That makes things look really nice. Uh, weird math teacher thoughts. k squared plus k squared is 2k squared. And then we've got only a plus 3k. And then plus 2 minus 2 minus 3 is going to be minus 5. Okay. 
We're looking for things that multiply to negative 10 and add up to 3. That's going to be 5 and negative 2. So we end up with 0 equals 2k squared. I'm um, going to do the minus 2 first. Minus 2k plus 5k minus 5. 2k and then k minus 1. And then plus, that's a terrible plus, 5 and then k minus 1. And that equals uh, 2k plus 5 and k minus 1. I feel like my k's look more and more like n's as the problem goes on. Um, since that equals 0, we get k equals 1. And if 2k plus 5 equals 0, we get k equals negative 5 over 2. For exponential stuff, uh, first off, we've got to sketch graphs. Uh, these are all going to be multiple choice. Um, my sincere hope is that you are canny enough that uh, you have a graphing calculator and you realize you could literally type this in as is with parentheses and all graph this and the big thing that you're trying to do here is to see which one of these uh, basically has a chance of looking like this um, and in terms of what we're looking for uh, this is one half to the x so it's going to have some kind of a downward slope like this Alternatively, you can plug in a couple points, uh, and that would get you an answer very quickly as well. If I plug in 0, we get 3 times 1, which is 3. Uh, A can't be it. B can't be it. C can't be it. And D is the only one that goes through the point zero three. 3. Uh, these are not hard problems. The goal here is to just plug in some points and get some values. Or this is a multiple choice test. Be uh, aggressive on your test-taking strategies. Use your calculator to the best of your advantage. Not good math practice, really good test practice. Uh, 106, just to talk about this again. Same thing, uh, I can either plug this directly in on calculator, or maybe just plug 0 in. And when I do that, 2 times 3 to the 0 is 2. 0, 2, OK. Nope. Nope. And a whole lot of nopes. I plugged in one point and got the answer in both of these cases. That seems like a solid bet. Now, if I hadn't, what if I plugged in one? Two times three to the one is six. Well, th this again is not made to be something that's scary for you. graphs of 2e to the x, uh, you will have to be able to graph something involving e, but again, if you don't want to use your calculator, you can literally just plug in a couple points, maybe even one point, and there's going to be a really nice point for us to plug in, because if you plug in 0, 2e to the 0 is that e to the 0 is 1, you still get 2, and that could be b, or it could be d. Um, the only thing you really need to know is that if you plug in 1 to e to the 1, e is about 3. Uh, in fact, it's about 2.7. 2 times 2.7 is not going to be uh, really close to 0. So d is our answer. Uh, because 2 times 2.7 is about 5.4-ish. That's up here. Similarly, for negative 3 e to the x plus 1, um, I want to talk about how you might do this without even plugging in points. If you know that plus 1 should be your VA, okay, that one's okay, that one's okay, that one's okay, that one's okay, oh no, all four of those are okay for that. Um, e to the x looks like this, negative times e to the x should look like this. So we're looking for a graph that goes in the negative direction, and the only one of those that does that happens to be uh, kind of similarly, if you know that e to the x, because it's a positive exponential, should look like this, you can get the answer to one, uh, 107 even faster because that's the only one that has that shape. Now we got some exponential equations. Uh, these are really all about finding things in the same base. Uh, I know that 36 is 6 squared, so we're going to see if we can make 216 out of, out of 6. 
And in fact, you can because 216 is going to be 6 to the third. Uh, so we can write this as 6 to the 3n is equal to, and that's going to be 6 squared. 3n equals 2, n equals 3 over 2. Uh, probably an easier level of complexity than you'll see on your final. Um, number 110, however, is pretty good as far as level complexity. 64 is 4 to the third. This becomes 4 to the negative 2x times 4. Negative 3x plus 2 is equal to 4 to the third. By multiplying things, I'm going to add the exponents. Negative 2x plus negative 3x plus 2 is equal to 3. Combine negative 5x, move 2 to the other side, is equal to 1. Divide both by negative 5, and I get x equals negative 1 over 5. Evaluating each expression, well, if this is equal to some exponent, I'm going to use my log bay, as my friends call this. 2 to the e is equal to 8. That means that e equals 3. Um, most of these have e. The answer is 3, but that's okay. Um, 4 to what power is 16? That's going to be 2 because 4 squared is 16. This is really just about what power of the base is the thing inside the log, and hopefully a really easy question for you. Uh, rewrite each in exponential form. Well, there's my b. So 216, my e to the negative 1 over 3 is equal to a. 1 over 6. Uh, 122, b, 17, to the 2, is equal to a, 289. Similarly, writing these in logarithmic form, there's the base. So log base 6, there's the argument. 1 over 36 equals negative 2 as an answer. For number 128, that's going to be log base 2 of 64 is equal to 6. Number 129, uh, if we could write this in common bases, we would, but we can't. So instead, we're going to convert to log. It's going to be log base 11 of 24 is equal to n plus 5. Log base 11 of 24 and then I've got a minus 5 to both sides. That's equal to n. For number 130, similarly, I cannot write these as common bases, so I'm going to convert this to log base 2 of 98 is equal to r minus 8. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. We get log base 2, 98, and then plus 8 is equal to r. Be careful not to combine these terms. They look like you can add them. In fact, it's nicer to write the plus 8 or the minus 5 out in front so you don't have that issue. But here, just for the sake of time and to make sure we understand where those are coming from, I just add them at the end. Going backwards, we have the same exact thing but in log form. We can convert this to exponential, and that becomes... 12 to the 1 is equal to x plus 3. That means that x is equal to 9. For number, I don't know, let's go with 134. That's going to be 7 to the 3 is equal to b minus 7. 343 is equal to b minus 7. 350 is equal to b. Uh, for number 137, now we're into log models. Uh, this is a, a really important set of problems. You'll probably have a couple of these that you'll need to do some work in a similar fashion. Um, we're looking at the a is equal to p, 1 plus r over n to the nt. Uh, you probably will have one problem where you have to deal with an n, one where you don't. Compounded yearly 
that hint is that n equals 1. So what we're really looking at is a equals p. 1 plus r over 1 is just r, and 1 times t is just t. Um, deposit 1,500, that's your p, your initial principal. 4% interest, that's your r. Um, and then you get have a friend who's going to have a, se a separate thing. So if we do this out, uh, we get a is equal to 1,500 and 1 plus r is 0 0.04 and t is going to be, we want 10 years. This is for you. For your friend, when you do this out, um, it should be a is equal to 2,000 And then we're doing 1 plus 1%. 1 That's your P, your R, uh, 1.01 to the T. And we said 10 for T. Cool. Uh, so when we do those out, uh, we get, so 1500, 1. 1.04 to the 10. Uh, this is about 2220.36. And 2,000 times 1.01 .01 to the 10, and that's 2209.24. Uh, you win by about 9 bucks, or I guess, sorry, 11 bucks. It's early. Number 138, uh, we've got things that are decreasing. I'm just going to set up these miles. I'm not going to do this one out. So starting population would be P decreasing by 20%, and this is going to be a yearly thing, so n would be 1 again. Uh, so for mice, we're looking at a equals 25,000, and then 1 minus 0.2 for 20%, um, and then that's to the t. In this case, it's going to be after 4. T's turn to 4 is very easily. Uh, for moose, we've got A is equal to 10,000. And then the uh, percentage part for that would be 1 plus 0 0.20, again, to the fourth power. Uh, plug those numbers in, and you get something that makes some sense. Looking at, uh, I don't know, let's talk about 140. And I'm just going to set these ones up. I'm not actually going to do these out so we can talk about uh, the compounded monthly part because that's something that you definitely need to be able to do. We're going to go back to the A is equal to P and then 1 plus R over N to the NT. And if compounded monthly means N equals 12, so that we'd set this up as A is equal to 25,000. 1 plus 0 0.1, and then compounded monthly, we get 12, and then 7 times 12 for my exponent. Similarly for number 141, uh, this time we're looking at 6% compounded monthly and 11 years. Again, I'm just going to set this up because I am assuming that you know how to press enter on a calculator. Uh, so we're looking at 25,000. And then 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12, and that's going to be 11 times 12. For number 142, we're looking at A is equal to 25,000, and that's going to be 1 plus 0 0.05. Ooh, compounded daily. Uh, there are 365 and a quarter days in a year. We're just going to assume that there are 365 because banks are not that smart. And they're going to go 2 times 365 as your exponent. At that point, you'd be done. Look, the answers. Look, another page of answers.